was if you were a fan or not before you actually got cast in the show. Oh, I absolutely was. Yeah. We can get into that. <laughs> So I guess my first question is, were you prepared for the world to be so obsessed with your scene from season three with the never ending story? Yes and no. I feel like for me, the never ending story was such a staple of my childhood, even though I didn't even grow up in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And I knew so many people that were like my parents age who loved that movie and the song. And so I kind of expected it to be like a fun little homage to 80s, you know, media, mm -hmm. but I never expected it to be as popular as it was with people my age. Oh, yeah. And it just it just blew up. I would be on social media like a regular teenager and hear the song and, <laughs> and our version of it. And I would like have to take a double back and be like, whoa, that, <laughs> that's my own voice. And that's that's me right there that they're yeah. like edits of and yeah I think that after that everything was just really you know mind-blowing because I realized how large the show really was and how much every little thing that somebody does on the show influences the audience oh yeah for sure yeah. so did you know that the did you know that originally the song they were going to use was like something from Lord of the Rings I think I think I had heard something about that. And there were there were little references in Susie's bedroom to Lord of the Rings that I I know they put in on purpose because of that, because they didn't actually use the song. But I'm not exactly sure what would have been in place. And yeah, it, the article I read was like it was the int and the int wife, which was oh. even, it wasn't even in the movies from what I understand. It's like a song that they wrote about. So I'm like, how would they even know how to sing it? So I didn't know if, right. you, would, if you had actually seen it and they gave you a version of it to sing or how it went down. So yeah, when I first auditioned, it was never ending story. And the breakdown of the character basically said an adorable nerd who sings a song with her long distance boyfriend. And that was all I got. That was just the sentence yeah. of description. And usually you get like a little more info, but I just got that. And so I went and I looked up Never Ending Story again because I'd watched it every single Friday with one of my best friends and we would sing the song. And I was like, I already know this. Hilarious. But I'm going to look into it again. Then when I did, I was, I was shocked because I was like, I forgot how sad this movie is oh, awful. Like, I won't ever watch it like I'm terrified <laughs> and it's scary and it's weird and I am scarred for life by our tax like the whole scene yes. yeah yes yeah. uh it's and I I remember I got so I was like this is going to be big this is going to be really fun I have a feeling it's going to be with Gayton um, who plays Dustin mm -hmm. because I originally got the sides and it said it was with Jenny and Timmy and not Susie and Dustin and so right. I was like I bet that this is just like fake names and it's with Dustin because it sounded like him and right. the dialogue was just like what Gayton talks like yeah. and I was like this has got to be with him and then I got super excited because I knew I would be singing with him again you know yeah we, we had gotten to do that as children and I was super excited to try and get to do it again with him right because you have a background you have a pretty big background in Broadway so you did know Gayton before coming on to the show did you know like Caleb or Sadie or any of them yeah I had met Caleb a few times we would all meet up at this Broadway playground we like to call it and it was on 8th Avenue and we would all play there in between our shows on Broadway and I had met Caleb and Gayton there and I'd seen Gayton in his first Broadway show ever and that was one of my first shows that I ever saw and Sadie I had known really really well because her brother Mitchell was in Matilda with me and okay. Matilda was my first show so we were family friends and when I started watching the show I started watching it for them and then when Sadie was added in season two I was so excited because I would get to hear about 
how her life was so different from Mitchell. And, and then season three, I got the opportunity to be in it. And then I was, so. Yeah, that's so exciting too. I mean, it's so fun for you guys, especially. It's probably, I would guess it's intimidating coming into a cast that had been together for years. But if you've already known them, you know, beforehand when you came on, I'm sure it was a breeze then like showing up. Yeah. It definitely helped and it made me feel a lot more comfortable. And I think that being comfortable while you're on set is one of the most important things that can happen. You know, talking through scenes, which even though Gaten and I knew each other, we still like went through everything that we were going to have to do. And we worked on the song together and he came to my trailer before and was like, are you sure this is okay? Do you want to try this? And it was just a super comfortable experience because we'd all already known each other. Where do you have faith? Okay, like here's one of our big things that I love to talk to the cast about are the fan theories that are out there because I love mm-hmm. them. Do you have a favorite fan theory? I generally would say, I think that Film Theory on YouTube had made a video about how Elle was connected to the upside down in ways that we didn't even understand yet. And I think that we've seen that. Mm -hmm. And so that used to be my favorite. And now that it's kind of already happened, I would have to say there was this theory that Mark Rowe, who plays my father on the show, sent me like last night. And it was about how all the members of Susie's family foreshadow what's going to happen to the real characters in the Hawkins storyline from the California storyline. Yeah. So basically I have a sister named Tabitha who's choking and talking about being bitten and is being like recorded for a film that the brother is making. Mm -hmm. And that's like, it mirrors or something. It mirrors how Steve is bitten by the Demobats in like the last episode and and there's a bunch of like weird parallels that I didn't even notice when they were filming it and I was sitting there watching them film it and I didn't even realize until halfway through I was reading and I was like this is actually really (laughs) elaborate and I don't know if it's just foreshadowing and parallelism or if it's something more but I like it yeah because it came out you know the whole and I keep joking that like the duffers ruined my life by saying that Peter Ballard was just a casting name because I was convinced he had something to do with Owens because at the beginning, Owens' wife says, you know, Skeeter, the Peter School Projects. And so I was yeah. like, oh, I bet Owens like adopted him. I mean, I just had this huge theory. I was convinced I was right. And then they tweeted that out. And I was like, oh, never mind. I guess I'm way off with that. That would have been really cool. I had never heard that one before. Oh, really? Yeah. Like there's, like, cause his name is, you know, they introduced Jamie Campbell Bauer as Peter Ballard. And mm-hmm. so when I got the screeners and it was like, I was keeping an eye, I was like tra- taking notes, trying to like, you know, write down everything I could think of. And they said that one line stood out to me because she says, wait, why do you need that? Those are Peter's school projects. And I was like, oh my gosh, like Peter Ballard and maybe Owens adopted him. And then they tweeted that out, that that was just a casting name. So I was like, oh. Uh. Uh... Yeah, but see, you have a brother named Peter, like Petey, I think. No, and then Petey McHugh. Yes. Yeah, so there's tons of Peters scattered throughout. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of, like, Billy's, Will's, Mm -hmm. Peters. (laughs) For sure, I know. And it's weird because you know the Duffers are so intentional with how they do stuff. So I'm like, I guess they're just trying to throw everybody off. Right. Like, and it gets down to the very tiny, like nitpicky, meticulous things because on set, they would tell me to have my hand a certain way and it would affect, you know, how people perceived it. And, and I, I think that I had an, a bracelet that they needed to see in one specific part. And I also have seen that Sarah Hopper's daughter her like hair tie has made it throughout yeah and so many little things that they pay so close attention to and then once it's out you realize you know the grand scale of why and it's mind-blowing yeah which is why everyone's so confused when they came out and said that they forgot will's birthday everyone was like how is that possible yeah (laughs) no 
Because I, I love that it's Will's birthday. It makes it even better. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And then it's like, but you have to think like Joyce probably wouldn't forget his birthday. Yeah. So it's like, oh, all right. Um, what if I've seen theories that Susie is a spy? I've seen theories that Susie's working for the government. None of these, I believe. I think they're kind of like, I'm like, come on, guys. Um, have you seen those theories like talking about your character? Yeah, I have. It's funny because when the show first came out and I was in just season three, people were convinced that I had done it to kill Hopper and Billy and all these different characters. And I I went to the Duffers and I talked to them about it and they were like, what? How is that <laughs> possible though? I feel like sometimes the theories are really, really thought through and make so much sense. Mm -hmm. but were never intended. And that was one of the things that I think was just never intended. But I loved actually getting to see that just because then I started thinking, what if this is true? And and I known about season four or what I was going to have to do in it yet. So I was like, what if I actually do? Oh my God. (laughs) What if I am a spy? (laughs) (laughs) And I didn't even know it. And I was playing it. Yeah. It's hilarious. I love it. And I love how crazy the fandom is like how rabid they are was that something you were prepared for coming into the show a little bit and I thought that I had convinced myself that I was because the love and appreciation that they have for everything including the little details is so similar to the Duffers and and the other directors and writers and what they put in and I feel like when I first started seeing like comments and theories that people were making, I was a little bit overwhelmed because I hadn't realized just how big everything was. And I don't think that you can until you actually go through it, but I, everyone in the cast had told me like, be ready, be prepared. And I was like, I so am, I so am. (laughs) And as soon as the the first day hit, I was like, I'm not, oh my gosh. I take it back. (laughs) Yes. But it was definitely like the love for that scene and the appreciation was overwhelming in the same way that the theories were. And it all equally felt great just because whether it was a positive or a negative in terms of the character, Mm -hmm. it was always a positive in terms of the work that we had done and the recognition that we were getting. So I always was really happy with it. Right. You know, nothing really, nothing else. Yeah, for sure. So what do you, or what can you tell me, if anything, about the final two episodes? Can you give me one word of how you would describe them? I can do one word. Um, I would say memory. I think that it really is the beginning of the end and the end of the beginning. Yeah. I think that everything that I have to be careful with my words, (laughs) I think, I think that everything that has left people questioning will be answered and, or, or at least elaborated on Mm -hmm. in ways that will be satisfying to anybody watching. Yeah. Now, have you seen the last two episodes? I have seen bits and pieces. They're still getting it ready. Surprisingly. Um, they're still, they're still getting all the final things together and they're ready to go. So. Yes. Cause we've got Friday and that's it. And people are counting down the days. I saw it just tweeted out that they are literally still working on the visual effects for the final two episodes, which is yeah. why. Yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot that's going into, and even just from the first volume, there's so much that went into you know, how long the scripts and episodes ended up being and how they were all like short films Mm -hmm. and and could technically be feature films in in length is, you know, mind blowing how much work it took. And I think that the last two episodes are just even bigger and on even more of a grander scale. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so excited. I I can't, I have my ideas of what I hope is going to happen, but I am just like giddy to see the final episode. 
So Same here, we all are. Yeah, I'm sure. Cause I taught, I spoke with um, Mason Dye last week who, who plays Jason sweet. I loved him. He was so nice. And he was saying that he's like, yeah, I've only seen eight and I haven't seen like, and nobody's even seen the final episode yet. So yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. They're right down to the wire. And we're just waiting the same yeah. as everybody else. Yes. So what can you tell us about your plans for the future? Have you got anything in the works or something that, you know, you're excited to talk about? I am excited to see how after this, everything is going to end with Stranger Things. But I also am working on Pretty Little Liars Original Sin right now. And that's going to be out July 28th on HBO Max. Nice. And that is also very scary. Very Stranger Things in terms of age. You know, I think that it pulls in a lot of different generations. It's about it's about mothers and daughters and grandmothers and a bunch of different age groups. So I think that it's kind of similar in how it pulls everyone in. Okay, nice. Now, what's your character's name in that one? Her name is Angela. She is kind of a sad loner okay. and gets pulled into this very popular group at school, very Heather style, oh, and yeah. gets an entire transformation. And some of it is great. And then some of it is way more sinister than anyone could ever imagine high school girls being a part of. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That is exciting for me because I watched the original Pretty Little Liars. So I would definitely yeah. keep an eye out for that. I hope to see you in the final two episodes of Stranger Things. I want more time with Susie and Dustin because I love them. So I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I loved getting to know you and hearing your thoughts about the show. Thank you. You too. Thank you so much for having me.